Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Clap! Good to go? Good to go. Good to go. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Savage Saturdays. I'm your host, Derek Whita. I think we're on episode four? Episode four. I feel, dude, I, you know when you like go into an endeavor? I liked last week's episode with Stacy so much. Episode three with Stacy. Um... Uh, I liked it so much, and then it's like that thing where you start something new, and you're like, shit, did we peak too early? <laughs> like, maybe we should have saved that for when things sort of start, start slowing down around episode 30 or 40 or 50 or something like that. I don't know. I just, I had a good time on that episode. She she got me, she fucking caught me a few times. A couple times. I was like, you know, um, she was she was pulling things out of me that I don't usually share. I was emotional. I won't lie. That was a lot of fun. So that was episode three with Stacy. Um, this is episode four. And uh, today, I'm going to introduce you to... Uh, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to intru- introduce you to the man that's been talking in the background th- through these three episodes. A- an element that I have enjoyed. You know, um, this, is my, this is my friend Owen. Um, we've been working together for about a year now. About a year. And when we started the podcast, I was like, man... I think it would be fun if your voice was just in the background. It's kind of like we're having a conversation, but you're not mic'd up. There's no camera. And it was fun. I enjoyed that. I yep. enjoyed it. And and a lot of people have been saying, like, you need to mic that guy up and blah, blah, blah. I was like, you know, and even Stacy said, um, well, I can't remember the word she used. She said confusing. She said it was confusing. I was yep. like, a different word for confusing is mysterious. <laughs> Who's the mystery man behind the camera? <laughs> well, this is Owen. He's the man behind the camera. And from now on in all the episodes, we're going to have a mic and a camera on him. Um, um, Owen's uh, been a good friend of mine for a year now. And actually, so it pertains to Drinking Bros. Totally. Because we met in Drinking Bros business. Yep. It was actually, oh, this is this is a two-way, like... It's fitness and drinking bros. Yep. I met you. I was I was taking a poop. I was taking my pre-workout poop at the gym. Classic. Dude. And I opened up Facebook and there's the drinking bros business page. And Owen was uh oh oh I remember your post. It was just something casual. It was like, "Hey, I just moved to Las Vegas. I'm looking or I'm wanting to l- l- learn video and editing and production and things like that. Is yep. there anybody in town who wants to help me make videos?" So that I can practice shooting and editing and stuff like that. Because before that, you were only making videos of... Of my kids. Yeah, it was like... Straight up just shooting my kids. <laughs> and kids are really hard to work with in front of a camera. Like mine do really well listening and following direction. But still, I was, I was running out of material to get, to get my kids. No, no, no. Wrong, <laughs> wrong, wrong. Yeah, so I was taking a poop at the gym. I was like, hey man, I'm in Vegas. Uh, you know, and we were like, we'll keep it casual. We'll just do so. We'll just have some fun. I was like, I enjoy video and, and editing and things like that. And, and, uh, we got together and it was supposed to just be casual. Yeah. And then we been, we kind of clicked right away. And I yeah. was like, this is what I do. Uh, I didn't want us to have a business relationship at all. Cause like at the time I didn't want to have a business relationship with anybody ever. Right. You know, right. I like, I'm a fucking, and you know, like I'm, I'm difficult to work with. You're unique. Yeah, you know, but I, I do think I like to do, you know, I just, I just, I just, I didn't have any intention of us working together or something like that, but we fucking like, we met up, we had fun. Um, and we've been working together for a year yep. and we have, I've, I've enjoyed it and we've done it, very well. It's cool, man. Cause I've done a couple different, I've done obviously everything with you. And then I've done a couple like kind of gig work. And the thing that became very evident early on is that the gig work, you get into that like 80% of the job, you, you get there. And then that last 20%, you're doing the fine adjustments. And you and I are good at being good at that 80% and moving on to the next one and not sitting there forever trying to make it absolutely perfect. Right, like, yeah. And like the video we just did, like the, the green screen video we just did, is like, yes. hey man, shitty is good. Let's fuck, right. yeah, yeah. Love it. Yeah, yeah. And so so this is, uh, so yeah, that's Owen. He's uh, he's kind of like my jack of all trades in, in you know, and like in our, in our business endeavors, you know, Owen and I work together in our business endeavors. I, I, I do what I do and I do, I do it when I want to do it. Mm-hmm. And um um, Owen is a good, uh, um, second in command here at the Whitey group, you know? So yeah, that's Owen. He, he, he's the, <laughs> he's the reason that we're able to do a podcast. Cause you know, like Ron, uh, Ross and Dan approached me like, do you want to do a podcast? I was like, dude, I'd love to do a podcast. 
I don't know. I don't know how the technology works. I don't want to know how the technology works. Like over the years, people were like, Derek, you should do a podcast. I was like, I'd love to. Just, I, you know, I don't know how to figure that stuff out. I fucking know how to work like six apps on my phone. At some point along the way, I have just given up. That's cool. On trying to know technology, you know? Yep. You know what I'm fucking good at? What I do, you know? And yep. so like, and, and so having, having, having Owen here helping me and, and working with me, it frees me up to do what I do, what I enjoy doing. So, so I, I get to podcast and I'm such a fucking cunt because I'm like, I just, I just want to show up. I want everything to be ready. I'm going to talk. And when we're done, leave me alone. Right. Get well, it uploaded. Get it fucking. <laughs> and I, I dig the gear. I like the setting up stuff. Like I liked, I liked that part about the army, all the, all the, you know, tools and specialized equipment and stuff like that. And so getting into video, I was like, oh man, there's just like a never ending list of stuff that I need to buy and learn how to, how to set up and. So yeah, we're we're the yin and yang of, yeah. that, of that sense. Like it works. Yep, it works. So that's Owen. And now, dude, I fucking um, uh, there's been comments on the internet. They're just like, so like the dynamic we've had going so far yep. was intentional. Everything I do is fucking intentional. So it's yep. like the people are like, it sounds like you're recording in a fucking empty room. It's like, yeah, it's a garage. garage. I like that effect. Yep. You know, put a microphone on the guy in the background. I was like, I have thought about this and I like it. Is, this is, this is my product I'm putting out in the world. If you want to fucking make, if you like, if you have a way you want to do your podcast, do it that way. Leave me the fuck alone. I want like, no, there's nothing that we do that isn't thought about and decided. And let you me, know, <laughs> let me bring up an example of that. Like the 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 weight behind you. One time, I had worked on getting it very very centered. The light was good. Like everything was perfectly balanced inside the frame of the video. And Derek walks into the garage and moves it three feet over to the side and says, I want this over to the side. It's <laughs> too like, centered. Yeah, Everything's too, too perfect. Centered. I don't like, I don't like, I don't like perfect. I, Cause you can, you can never attain perfection. So why shoot? Right. Yeah, yeah, you know? Works for me, man. Yeah. For me. It's like, you know, my art room in here, you see how my paintings are hung. Yep. It would just drive somebody insane. Like, why is it, you know, you know, Stacy likes to decorate the house and everything is dress, right? Dress. Yep. And it's all even. If I was doing it, I would intentionally make things crooked <laughs> and things like that. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, that's fun. That's funny. So, but I just, you know, I hate the, uh, it's just, it's just funny stuff. When you're, when you do things on the internet, you open yourself up to, um, just, you know, everybody has internet access. So, and an opinion and an opinion. Yeah. So, so that, that, but, that, but now we're going to make those three fucking cunts happy and you got a microphone <laughs> and a camera and, uh, so whoever you were, Hey, thanks. Yep. Here you go. Yep. So that's Owen, everybody. He, he wears, uh, he wears silly t-shirts and, uh, the, that Bass Pro Shops hat quite often. Yeah. It's just, uh, just, and so, and Owen, Owen, so <laughs> Owen guys, Owen's old. I'm old as fuck. Owen's in his forties. I'll be 42 this month. Good. Look, when's your birthday? March 29th. You'll have to remember, remind me yep. that morning because yep. I'll forget and I'll we'll, like, we'll do something. Too. Yeah, we'll do a nice little kid. Yeah, right. Shit. You're going to be 42. 42. 42. And, yep. and so oh, Owen is fucking 42. And uh, so Owen is an army vet as well. He's 42. You've kind of like bounced around in uh, careers and he's he, he's got four kids at home. And I, it's like when we met, you were like, oh, yeah. At one time, my kids were ages one, two, three, and four. I yeah. was like, yo. There's a little gap where they're not consecutive like that, but for the most part, they're, um, I think in like another month or two, then they'll be back to being consecutive. And it's two, two, three, four, no, three, four, five, six. Woofda. Yeah. Woofda. Yep. Uh. So yeah, so you the, so you started having kids 36, 37, Lord, you're we, like. We started like, super late. So it was after yeah. I got, after I medically retired from getting blown up in Afghanistan um, and Declan, my first, my first son, um, he showed up and Talia and I, my wife, Talia, we had a, a conversation where we're kind of like a, we're, we're go big or go home. We're, we're all in on something. Or yeah. Let's not have, let's not like, like, Hey, you want kids? Sure. Yeah. What you want to, you want a dozen, seven. you want a dozen or right. a baker's dozen, you right. know, like, exactly. Uh, yeah. exactly. And so <laughs> when the first one we were and and, and even before that we were 35, 36, and completely content being the cool aunt and uncle. Is Talia in her forties? Yeah, she's same age. As Shut the fuck up. Yeah, she's she looks young as shit. Right. You got okay. So Owen's cool, guys. His kids are cool. You, uh, Talia is 
super wife, super mom. She's I amazing. just like, I have the most respect. Because like, so Owen is here a lot. A lot. And Talia, you guys don't have childcare. Talia's yep. just at home with the kids, four yep. kids. Homeschooling. And just, yeah, homeschooling them, taking care of them. And they're good kids. And it's just like, wow, man, you know, because, but it's just, you know, just all, just not, not, not many things make me stop and be like, whoa, shit, respect. Right. But that's one of the things like, God damn, respect. She's, all right. She's yeah. She's incredible. <laughs> she is incredible. And I, but I kind of fucking hate her. She's, her <laughs> videos are better than ours. She's, so she's better at drawing than me. Dude. She, she, she understands these things. She's it's just creative like, as fuck. yeah, yep. yeah. So she can go fuck herself on all that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. She's into so, weaving right now. So she she just she'll she'll get into something and then kind of move from project to project and so she's uh, I'm I'm buying looms and and fucking organic uh, yarn from little farm like all kinds of stuff but it, hey, hey yeah keeps mama happy so yeah yeah. I'm, I'm like forward. I got I got to go stare at some dude that's fucking ninety percent naked <laughs> making weird ass noises lifting shit for a while. I'm gonna go spend are, more time in the gym. Yeah, are you are you good here? Yeah. So so yeah. So that's so that's Owen, and I, you know we'll probably bounce back around and um maybe get to know a little bit more about him. Um, but uh, today's today's main topic for the podcast we're we're gonna talk about a big one. We're talking about motivation. Love it. Motivation. Motivation. It's one of the most asked questions. And, you know, it's like, you know, because it was like somebody like me, what do I do? I, I fucking, I don't, it is not my personal goal or endeavor to inspire people. I don't set out to be like, how do I inspire the unmotivated? That's not what I do. Like basically like what I do on the internet is it's, it's sort of like a diary for me. It's like, here's what I'm doing. Here's how I feel about it. And like maybe as like a, as a consequence, it does it does motivate or inspire people at the time of need. And it's, and it's weird for me to think about because um, I, uh, I don't draw motivation from other people. I am not motivated. Like, I don't see something and be like, I want that. I want, or I, like, it doesn't wake anything up in me. But there was a time where somebody did exactly that for me. So where, where I'm like, where it's, I sit here and think now, like, why are people motivated by me? What, like, that's fucking stupid. But in 2012, so I got my leg cut off in... Um, it was either 2012 or 2013. I got my leg cut off December 6, 2011, and I spent like a year or so, or after I learned how to walk and do do stuff, I, I moved to Denver, and I was still working out, but it wasn't, I was drinking a lot, not in a bad way, like I was, for, I was out of pain, and I was like enjoying my life, or I was just kind of living a normal life, you know, like we'd go to the bar on Tuesday and play fucking, uh, Trivia, which I love, by the way. I would like to find a place. Are you good at it? Uh, uh, yeah, it's like stupid knowledge about TV and sh like. I'm pretty good. Dude, I'm pretty people, good. I know people. dumb science things. You yeah. like, you'd be surprised at what's in the old noggin. Somebody was saying that the other day about the episode with Stacy. Like Derek sitting here talking about like fucking pulsars and two moons. I was like, yeah. I have this knowledge, right. like, you know, <laughs> so, yeah. I spent a lot of time in the hospital watching yeah, TV. Yeah, I read a lot of books, yep. yeah, so, um, but, it, like, so that's what I was doing, I was, you know, I, um, when I moved back to Minnesota, I moved back to Minnesota, I think, in, like, 2013, and I just didn't have the fire, mm -hmm. you know, I, my fire had dimmed, like, the fire, like, I just didn't have the fire, and you know who was, like, fucking just, like, crushing it on the internet in the, C.T. Fletcher, there's, so C.T. Fletcher, that was like his his um, peak on the internet. I don't want to say that in a bad way because he's still relevant and fucking cool. But like his shit was like top of the food chain right. for a couple and years. The and so, algorithm was in his Yeah, favorite. yeah. So, you know, and he his videos really woke something up inside of me. And still to this day, like, you know the fucking stupid noises I make in the gym all the time? Oh, yeah. Inspired by C.T. <laughs> Fletcher. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or is it like, do you have to turn your headphones off sometimes? <laughs> like, oh, when I'm mic'd up, like, hip hop, tip, tip. Deadlift <laughs> is the best. Yeah. But dude, like I say it in the like I'll miss a lift and be like, you know, like it's like shit. Why did I miss that lift? Because you were quiet. I was quiet. Yeah, yep. I did. You know, like I'm. Yeah, yeah, and like I, I, yeah, it's a thing. But so C T Fletcher for me was it was like he fucking he you know he relit my flame back in the day, and now now it's at the point where like you know I. I I'm good to go by myself now, but maybe every at some point in someone's life, maybe like we need that from someone or something like that. So when we're talking about motivation, it's like, 
uh, my motivation comes from within and we'll get in the, like that. That's what real motivation is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do need to like get it somewhere else. So like when I think about my position, I'm like, why do people fucking need me to like be motivated? I'm like, Oh, I needed CT Fletcher once. So I get it. And like you just, somebody just helps you one time and you're good to go. And that's a beautiful thing. Hold on. <laughs> okay. I think so, people like to also not feel like they are alone in whatever their experience is. So to know that somebody had gone through it before or to see how they navigated the choices to get through it, yeah. that that's, that's where that draw comes from. You know, the, you know, so it's like we catch, so I'm, I'm open, I'm open about, um, you know, when I, when I say I just, I just share what I do and how I feel about it. I just, I, I, I'm, I, I'm comfortable talking about my inner monologue, you know, and I don't know why somebody wouldn't be, but most people aren't comfortable with that, you know? And it's like, um, um, when people are like being relatable, you know, what's super funny about like depression is one of the things in is like depression makes you feel like you're the only one around you that. So what do, so you know what, you know, like depression and narcissism go hand in hand in that way where it's like, I am the only one. I'm the only one. No fucking experience is unique to one individual, which is the crazy thing. But we all feel like we're alone sometimes. Yeah, it's weird. So like sometimes we do need to draw from somebody else, you know, and, and feel. Yeah. But um, so but so I. I don't look outwards anymore for sure. And, and, and here's like, cause I, I think I, I, I've, I know what motivation is and I, I just want to like, uh, I've shared this before, before in places, but, um, I used to, people are so, they have, there's a misunderstanding about what motivation is. Okay. And so motivation, like, what do we all think it is? We all think it's that it's a feeling that motivation is a feeling. It's like when you're motivated. And so like, what does that mean? Like, we, like you have that that burning desire inside, that drive. It's like, I. we think motivation is this feeling of wanting to do something. It's like, I feel good, I want to do this. And we're talking about like physical, you know, um, uh, mental or physical challenges here. It's like that good feeling. I feel motivated, you know? So like, but what I learned, so in December 2016, that was the last time that I had a run in with, um, I, I checked myself into a psych ward because I was here and I was just like overwhelmed um, with, um, you know, uh, thoughts of suicide and things like that. And usually I can control that, but I was, yep. I was too drunk and I told Stacy, I was like, I don't feel in control. I'm, I mean, I won't do anything probably, but I don't feel like I'm in control. Right. So I checked myself into the psych ward and from there I got assigned a new psychologist who I was seeing weekly in 2017. And I don't know, I must have been talking to her one day about like, you know, about motivation. And I was like, I just don't feel motivated to do these things. And she's like, what do you think motivation is? And I told her, I was like, well, you know, let's try to, it's hard to explain what motivation is, you know, right. but we all think it's that feeling of when we feel good and we want to do something. And she said, and she told me, she's like, she's like motivation that that's misunderstood motivation. And this is, she told me this and I was just like, fuck, it's changed my life since, you know? And so here's where we'll get to. So she told me that motivation is nothing more than an idea of who we want to be or what we want to do. That's what motivation is. And that she said that I was like, that makes a lot of fucking sense. Cause like, if you think about the word motivation, like what it's an idea of who we want to be. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, if uh, like hear me now, so it's like, what's my goal? I would like to, you know, or like, we'll just say later on this year, I want to win rush club. So I want to be the rush club above knee champion still. That's my motivation. My feelings throughout the process are something completely separate from my motivation. My motivation is who I want to be. My motivation is what I want to do. Yeah, okay? those feelings fluctuate. Yeah, and so like, and so, so when people write me, it's it's so often people are like Derek, I they're like you know I was in the army, I let myself go. I'm I'm not feeling motivated. But and, and like when they say that to me, I know right there if somebody if somebody takes the time to write me. And they say they're not motivated. I'm just like, you don't understand what motivation is. Because if you weren't motivated, you wouldn't have written me. You obviously want to make a change. Yeah, good point. There's, you know, like, you, and so it's like, you have motivation. And that's the thing. It's like, if, if like only, so only stupid people don't have motivation because like we all have an idea of who we want to be or what we want to do. That's motivation. 
that's motivation. You just close your, like the dream of, of, of who you want to be. Close your eyes and think about who you want to be, what you want to do. That's motivation. Not even on like a grand scale. Right. Like, yeah. Like I want to be a better dad. Or yeah. I wanna, like, like just whatever. Yeah. I want to be less, I want to use three baby wipes instead of five right. every time I wipe my ass. That's my, <laughs> I'm motivated to be, you know, I'm going to save this planet by, you know, no. save the turtles. <laughs> <laughs> so that's motivation but you know i lived my whole life thinking because like in the army it's like what's motivation it's like motivation is just like you always like there is no negative inner voice right that's what we think it is we, we have a negative voice and we're just like oh that's that's you know i'm unmotivated it's like mm, no <laughs> so like what so what are people missing when they think they don't have motivation but I, we just we just i and like we just proved that everybody has motivation cuz i that's you know she told me that and i believe that i think she's right i think i was wrong for fucking 20 years and i think she's right that motivation isn't a feeling motivation is an idea of who we want to be it makes sense cuz that's like it's our motivation you yep. know and so what are people missing because motivation is there, so what are they missing? What's what is the good feeling? That because like that's what they think it is, you know. And so it's like a, a big one is discipline. It's discipline, di huge. discipline, huge. Be, and and then, like everybody says this stuff, but it's like so you know people like I I I'm I'm not feeling motivated. It's like hey, straight up. I don't feel motivated. I don't feel, I don't feel good every day. And like, I'm, I'm four weeks out of competition and it's, we're at the point of prep where everything scares me. My body hurts and I don't believe, or I'm not confident that I can hit the numbers that are on my program, right. you know? And so I don't, big. I don't feel good. Yeah. I don't feel, I don't feel good. I'm, 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 I, it is natural. No matter how long you've been an athlete, like it's natural to doubt yourself or it's natural to like confront fear. And f so fear is one thing. Fear is one thing that gets, that'll fucking test your discipline. And so it's like, I don't feel good, but I know, but I know if I fucking show up to the gym Every day when I'm supposed to, and I fucking hit my numbers, I know if I come home and eat, if I come home and rest, and if I just do what I need to do every day, I, my, if my motivation is to hit, you know, X, Y, Z at my powerlifting meet, I will have a very good chance of doing that if I do everything today right. Yep. And then I do tomorrow right. That's all I have to do. So that's discipline, man. You also trust your process in that sense. Like over the years have developed what works for you. And, and maybe that's why you don't look so much outward for, for that motivation or, or drive or whatnot and have developed your process so you trust that. We could have a whole uh, episode about patience yep. someday oh, God, because yeah. like that's the thing like because I used to fucking stress myself out. I used to, you know, it was in the past. So like, you know, I think my, my prep started January 27th and yep. my powerlifting meet is on April 4th. Uh -huh. And in the past, like if prep started on Janu January 27th and if on that day I wasn't able to do what I wanted to do on April 4th, I would be scared and stressed and it, like I would do poorly because when I'm, if my goal is C and I'm starting at A, I'd be mad that I'm not at C. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, it's, so it's like patience. And so that's, yeah, exactly that. Like I don't look, I don't, I don't look down the road that far. It's like, you know, or it's natural to, and if you do it, you get overwhelmed. Like, so Brandon sent me my new program, mm -hmm. uh, last week <laughs> for the last, the last five weeks of prep. And I looked at week nine and I was like, Oh Fuck! I can't do it. my week nine. My deadlift is a, a, a is a one rep max. It's a four sixty to four eighty. That's nice. And dude. I've 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 my lifetime PR is four fifty one. And I did that when I was forty pounds heavier. And so with your lifetime PR. Oh my my amputee PR amputee is four fifty one. Yeah. What was, your, what was yours with two legs? Five twenty five. No shit. When I got yeah, I was uh, I was a five twenty five deadlift. I I remember I hit a four seventy five squat and I benched three twenty five right before right before I got shot. So yeah. it's like you know, it's like, you know, I've been do I've been doing fitness for okay. a little while. I've yeah. been doing that fitness. Yeah, and so you know, like that's a that's a funny thing people ask. Or like, did getting shot make you who you are? Like fitness wise, did it make you as physically? Uh, you know, as, as driven and as disciplined physically and mentally as I was like, it definitely, 
I mean, it didn't know I was on this. I've, this is me. Like, this is me. What I do now, this is me. And it's always been me. I think we talked that in, in episode one, I was episode like, one. when I, when I was 17 years old, when that psychologist told me to start working out yep. ever since then, it's always like, it's just been fucking go <laughs> from there, you know, but becoming an amputee has like really fucking helped me grow on that, you know? So, um, and I, I guess that's another thing too. And like, like motivation and like the feeling good, like, dude, like my leg in this prep, it's, it's been super painful. My, you know, like my, yeah. So, okay. Let's, let's, let's just, let's just refocus here. We're talking about motivation. We said what motivation is, but now we're talking about what people lack instead. And that's that feeling good, you know? The feeling we're, good so part. we're on discipline. So like I wake up, my fucking leg doesn't fit in the morning because I, so I got, when I got this leg, I was 168 pounds. And I had to gain about eight pounds to fit super tight in my socket for when I squat. Because like at 168, my socket, it felt great to walk around and it felt great all the time. Felt great from a, you know, let's talk about the socket socket a little bit. So felt great from a size standpoint or, or felt good from a, the suction of how... I, I, sometimes I don't think people understand how the socket fits on your legs. So well, it so it fit. It fit. It fit. It, it's a. It was a proper fit. So the way sockets work, you know, my we'll just if if like sorry for those of you guys who can't watch the video. If you're listening, these videos come out on YouTube. I think a day or two after, like on Mondays or Tuesdays or something like that. Could be Sunday. I don't know. It's my podcast. It's not my p- place to know the details. Oh, and when does the video come out? Like, uh. Oh, you're fired. Oh, um, no. So the socket, it doesn't just, um, the, my, my body weight is equally distributed throughout the socket. There's places in the socket. So it's not like my stump is just banging. Okay. So like last year when my leg didn't fit, my stump was just banging. Oh, All my right. weight was on the end of my stump and right. it was like reshaping my stump. Like the whole bottom right part of my stump had lost all its hair and it was getting caved in. There's not a lot and of meat. On I know. The end and of I was like, VA, hello, we are literally reshaping my fucking shit. Cause so, um, but so now I gained eight pounds for this, this powerlifting just for the squat. Cause in the hole, my suction was popping out. So it's a suction suspension system yep. and, and, and somehow it creates like an airlock, but there's rings on my liner. And if they pop, there goes the seal. And so my leg will slip off a little bit. So I have gained, like I have maxed out in this socket. So when you get fit, so like, let's say I, I got measured at 168 pounds, you have like plus or minus three pounds. If you lose three pounds, you're going to start bottoming out. And if you gain three pounds, it just doesn't fit. And then when there's a gap between my stump and the bottom of the socket, it creates like a vacuum and you like get it. You get like a hickey on the bottom of your stump, you know, because it just sits there and sucks it. So (laughs) it's like, let me fucking, let me suck that stump. (laughs) Let me suck fucking stump sucker. So yeah, dude. So like point is it's fucking, it's been painful. Right. And so like where, where like when our feel good shit, it is easy. It is easy to go to the gym when you fucking feel good. You know what I mean? Yeah. You want to take a time out? No, we're good. We're good to go. Yep. Okay. Um, it's easy to go to the gym when you feel good, but like those feel, you can't bank on those feel good. Everybody knows this. Everybody knows this. And, but it's funny, like we, Everybody knows this, but if you're in a lull, if you're depressed, or if you're in, in you know, you've, you've put yourself in a hole, it's, you don't know the things you know anymore. Like, right. look, like all the mistakes I made in 2009, 2010 were stupid fucking mistakes in retrospect. We're like the, the way I was like, I wanted to, all I, all I wanted to do was fucking die. Mm-hmm. And there were, there were better choices and options available to me, but I couldn't see them because I was so fucking lasered focused in on my depression. So it's like, so everybody knows it's easy to do. It's easy to go to the gym and work out when you fucking feel good, but you can't bank on those days because who the fuck feels good super often? Like I'll, I feel good. I felt good on Sunday. Cause last week was deload week. It was yep. pretty easy. I felt, I felt okay Sunday maybe, you know, but then woof right back into the shoot Monday. Monday broke me, dude. When, what day is it today? Wednesday? Today, yeah. Those yeah. deadlifts on Monday fucking fucked me up. I'm, and I'm like, but that's training. It, like I'm in, I'm sore, I'm in pain, but that's the, that's what it takes to get better. Yep. Like, you know, growth hurts, yep. you know? So it's, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. So, um, 
I don't feel good. I didn't feel good today. Like, what was I doing today? I was like warming up. I'm hitting my Theragun. Mm -hmm. I'm just like trying to stretch. And and I don't know, because it's like my, my low back was fucking tight and sore. But like, that's the fucking... That's the name of the game, you yeah. know? And so, you know, it's like, nobody fucking feels good. Nobody feels good. Fitness hurts. Fitness hurts. It makes the end result sweeter, though. Yeah. I, and, and it, it really does. It, and, like, it, it takes, it like, it has to be done. Yeah. There's no way around. There's no way to work out, you know? Like, we've said this before. Like, fucking, a, 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 a grueling workout is not sitting at home getting your fucking dick sucked while you're eating ice cream. Yep. Okay? Like, and it's, but, and people are like, well, f like, so fitness hurts, but staying at home eating ice cream and potato chips that hurts mentally and you know it'll it'll make you sick and unhealthy down the road too you know death so, of a thousand cuts yeah like, yeah oh man how did, how did this happen yeah that's that's exactly that's how my dad went man he yeah. was just like you know it's just i i it, it like i'm not speaking bad of him here like this is the story of his life like he slowly killed himself for 10 years he had diabetes and copd and he didn't hit like with his diabetes he didn't do a lifestyle change he just, you know, he took the medicine and things like that. But you could see him, get, like, his arms were fucking bone skinny. Yeah. You know? And it's because, like, he had diabetes, but he was still drinking pop and eating candy and things like that. And so it was just, I, you know, and and even, you know, I was, my mom would buy him gummies at the grocery store. And I was like, I was like, hey, like, I'm sorry, but, like, this is assisted suicide. This is assisted long-term suicide so yeah so it's like do workouts hurt yeah yep. but fucking guess what life is life is pain everything's a problem so it's all about having pain that you want and problems that you enjoy you know because <laughs> and and goals which i know is where this transitions into in a minute yeah. but it is it's setting those goals that that work parallel to your motivation and and where you're trying to get to that's yeah so i think that good feeling comes from um having very small measurable goals yeah and, and getting getting little wins yeah getting that low-hanging fruit yeah off. i want to i i like i want to do i like maybe we'll do goals week after next i think next week we're i want to i want i want goals to have its own fucking oh, yeah. episode yeah. like because you can you can do so this I, I like doing this podcast because you go on you go on Instagram and you try to type a caption about motivation. There is so much to say. Okay, so we'll we'll um so the feel good stuff. Nobody fucking feels good almost ever, and so it's a discipline thing. So when people are like Derek, I don't have motivation. You have motivation. What don't you have? You don't have discipline. You don't have discipline because all of this shit is nothing. Like I said, it's nothing more than me doing what I know I need to do every day and it's going to get me to where I want to be. Like, that's it. So like, I just, I said, Monday hurt, Monday broke me, but, um, I felt good. Like I reminded myself later in the day, I was like, I didn't miss a lift. They all felt heavy as shit. So my deadlifts on Monday, it was a double at 420, and then it was five by one from the blocks with 425 pounds. And then it was seven singles at 400 pounds. And it was, they were all brutal and they fucking hurt. And I feel like I didn't do a very good job. Your and I was, your perception of it was different though, because we would relook at the, at the video of what we just shot and you're like, Oh, that's going up a lot faster than, than it feels. So it's, it's the plight of the athlete, man. But, um, you know, I, I was in the shower later that day and I said, uh, I didn't miss a lift. Nope. And so every, I, I did it like the, the program is the plan. I did everything that was in the plan that day because like that plan is to get me to where I want to be. My motivation is to do well at this powerlifting meet. I have my number goals I'd like to hit there. I did everything I needed to do on Monday, even though like training, like it's so weird, dude. I like, this is what I do. And it's hard for me to keep my head in the game. So if it's fucking hard for me, it's got to be even more difficult for somebody who this, their life isn't this. This is like literally my existence. You're not doing the lifestyle change at this point. And so like, I think that's a good point. Like speaking about your dad or, or somebody who has uh, been stagnant and has the motivation to no longer be stagnant. And then man, totally forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> well, yeah. Owen got blown up. Sometimes I call Owen TBI boy. No, I, th I, I think I know. Um, 
I, I I understand what you're trying. Like we're saying, if it's difficult for me, it's got to be more difficult oh, yeah, for someone yeah. else. Or like I face. We, but the thing is, we face the same challenges. You're right. That 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 the mental shit of all of this, we face those same challenges. Yep. And sometimes I and and quite often I'm not happy with myself either. But I don't give up. Right. I don't fucking stop because right. the 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 like the alternative to these feelings is feeling or the alternative to feeling like this. So what is this? It's like, you know, self-doubt, questioning yourself, things like that. The alternative is knowing that you're not even fucking trying and fuck that. Right. Like fuck knowing that you don't even fucking try. It's like you give no effort at all. That's the alternative. So if you want to be healthy and fit and, 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 and also like mine's, mine's a little bit exaggerated because I'm, working at an elite level here. It's right. it's not not many people can do what I'm doing right now. And I'm not even where I'm going to be soon. And I'm already at a level of like I'm one of few in the world. It is what it is. I don't it like I'm not impressed. Obviously, I fucking hate myself <laughs> cuz I'm not doing well enough, you know? But it like at the end of the day, I have to remind myself like I'm one of very few people doing what I'm doing. So, it's a little bit exaggerated, but it's the same thing. It's just that's just a difference of degree. You know, like right. a big thing in psychology is like difference of degree. Like when does something fucking um, fuck with your day to day, you know? So it's just a difference of degree, but it's the same mental challenges, the questioning, the self doubt, you know, Self-talk, it's like, yeah. And like voice. some other fuck. Yeah. So like, I get it, man. Like you wake up and you're sore and you got to go to the gym and you're like, ah, uh, like, yeah, because when I'm sore, like, and I, if my put, even putting before. I put, I have to wake up and put my liner on and sometimes my stump is so sore that hurts. Oh. And then going in my leg is like, Oh, yeah. like everything fucking hurts, you know? But it's like, you just, all you got to do, you know, as like when I'm like that, it's like, you just got to take it one at a time. I was like, all right, we're not, we're not going to de- deadlift 420. We're just going to put our leg on. That's it. All right. And then I'm going to go fucking brush my teeth. And then I'm going to fucking get my supplements ready. If I can make it to my pre-workout, I'll be okay. I think most yeah. people have that that line too where you're like, if I can at least get to pre-workout or if I can at least get to like all the camera gears loaded up into the van or, yeah. or whatever it is for your – if you can get to that short-term like, okay, well – We've come this far. So. Shit looks. Shit seems overwhelming. You know, yep. it's like shit seems overwhelming when you when you feel like shit and you're thinking about like fuck. You know, I bought Derek White's workout program available on DerekWhite.com, and today there's a hundred burpees. I can't even get out of bed right now. <laughs> How the fuck am I gonna do a hundred burpees? It's Who like puts no a hundred burpees yeah. in a fucking workout. They're good for you. They make you mentally tough because <laughs> like you know what a hundred burpees does. So it's like in day two of the twelve week program, there's a hundred burpees. I know, but it's it's five rounds of twenty, and you know what that does to a person. So who like do you think you could do a hundred burpees? No, not yeah, right now. but. If you fucking sit there and do one burpee at a time and like, you know, it'll take you like 20, 30 minutes, maybe you're going to finish and you'll be like, all right, I just did something I didn't know I could do. Right. And that's what people are doing in this 12 week training program. Like we are forcing them, you know, it's like you buy my program and I hope that you fucking understand that quitting isn't an option. Right. You know, like the, the, the minute you buy a program from me is the minute you fucking commit yourself to being physically and mentally tough. I think that's part of the buy-in, you know? And so, we good to go? Yeah, no, we're good. Okay. Um, so, yeah, but... Um, uh, uh, yeah, I agree. People people are... The comment, the comments and feedback that, that I read on the website and the back end of, of running everything, the emails that come in are, are awesome. Yeah, and you know, and so like in getting in, like most of these, most of the people that are buying the programs from us are the people who... A majority of them are people who who needed that flame relit. Yep. You know, and and so it's like, uh, I don't I don't exactly um, the difference between me and somebody who's taken. So like we're saying like these challenges aren't unique to me. Like my or like your fucking whatever is stopping you right now from working out is not unique to you. Literally everybody, to include myself, has that inner voice. Yep. Okay. The difference between me. And these people is just like, I have never, ever taken a long period off. I've, I've never just quit. I've never quit for a year. I've never quit for two years. And I don't fucking, I'm not judging people who did. It is tough. It is tough. 
It is very, very, very fucking difficult to be on top of your shit all the time. And I think, you know, sometimes I've been saved by friends or family and I've, and I've had a lot of fucking therapy. And so I, I, you got I'm, tools from that. Help, yeah. That's the thing. Like my, my, and maybe that's, that's one thing that, um, you know, we, I, we talk about this a lot. Like what the fuck is like, there is literally no difference between me and the person who asked for my help. So like, but so that's like, I have more tools, you know, right. but so if you're sitting at home, you're like, I don't have motivation. I don't fucking, you know, I was like, first off, we just, we just told you that you do have motivation. We think you lack discipline, desire, drive and commitment. You know, those are probably the things that I think we can jumble it all up in that. Yeah. So it's like, like, and guess what? I feel that too. I feel that too. I feel it every day. I dude, my days. Oh, sorry. My days are like this, man. And like, sometimes I am fucking like, like, I'm like, so, you know, this morning it's, you know, my, I like my workout, but no, we're doing the podcast. I got to go to the lawyer and then I got to go work out again. Yep. And I know I'm going to be in my car. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm going to be like manically trying to find the one money song that's going to light <laughs> me up inside. Like, that's a thing. Like, you know, so it's like, Oh, okay. So how do, so how do we help? How do we help with that? Like you lack discipline. Like, you know, um, if you're having a day where you're just not feeling it, here's what I do. If I'm overwhelmed by my life, like our business is, there's always things to think about. There's, and I got the, I got twins and I, you know, yep. like things with Stacy, um, you there's know, a lot going on. There's a lot going on, you know? And so, but I need to focus like for one hour a day, shut your fucking brain off, shut your fucking brain off for like, for when I'm really, really, really overwhelmed, it's, I'm just like mentally, I'm like, okay, I love everybody. Jack and Max, you don't exist. Stacy, you don't exist. Owen, you don't exist. Jake, Brandon, you guys don't exist. It is just me right now. And it's like no thoughts about business, no thoughts about life. And because I need to fucking get a release. Okay. It's okay to turn your fucking brain off for one hour a day. Do you, is that like your CrossFit workouts? Do you think that's kind of more where that happens? Um, what, when I really, really like what I'm doing today, going yeah. to the bro gym, yeah. that's going to, that's going to be, gym yeah. Stuff. So okay. I put my fucking headphones in yep. and I'll, I'll be going with Rick and I, I do chat with people there and things like that. But you know, so it's like, I, we had to have a conversation and, um, and I told you, and it's like one morning last week I was, I walked into the gym and this person was texting me about business. This person was texting oh, yeah. me about business. This person was texting me about business. And usually I let that shit slide, but I was like, enough. I can't, I can't, this is my fucking time. Like I, I will give everybody, I will give everybody that I know 20 hours a day. Yep. I want four hours a day where I just fucking do me like it, like, and I've said this before, like fitness is a selfish endeavor, but like what we're talking about, like you taking care of you is selfish. When I, I say, shut your brain off, shut your phone off. Oh yeah. So, but like, so like what I do, I turn all my text notifications off. Yeah. When I'm in the gym, you know, it's like my text notifications. I never have social media notifications or anything like that, you know. Um, yeah, but what it's would like, that look like? What's that? I said, what your social, if you had social media notifications. I've never on. had them on, so I don't, I don't know. But it's like, turn your phone off. I have to have my phone for my music, okay? Yep. But turn your notifications off. Forget the fucking world. Yeah. Take care, like, do you. Be fucking selfish. And all you're thinking about is your motivation. Right. So I sit there and visualize. It's like, so when, when, when we're like just overwhelmed by all these business things, it's like, fuck, stop. What's my motivation in my life right now? I want to win Rush Club. And so I sit there and I fucking, I take an hour where I'm working out, but in my head, I'm doing like, by the time I do Rush Club, November 21st, I'll have done the workout in my head a couple thousand times. Right. And I just visualize it's, it's so you fucking Stacy, man, we could, we, 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 I would like to bring Stacy on to talk about this. Cause she listens to a podcast called the happiness lab. Oh yeah. You're and, talking they, about that one. and they, and they sort of validated my mental practices, which is, it's always fun to have if for like <laughs> me, like I, I, I've done something for so many years and it's just sort of like been an evolution of my life and it right. like occurs naturally, but then to have it validated by science and then they put it, they put what I do into words that makes me think and refine. Right. So it's like, you know, so you're, you, if, if, if you're like distractions will fucking kill your discipline. 
distractions kill discipline. And like when you're fucking married and you have kids, there's always something you can, people are like, I'm too busy. It's like there is literally everybody always has too much to do. Mm -hmm. We live in a world where uh, like we're overwhelmed and we, we have anxiety and depression because we literally have too much to do. All right. Turn it off. Turn it off for one motherfucking hour a day and go take care of yourself. And it's selfish, but it's also not. Because if you're happy with you, then you're fucking, every, people know this. Like if you're a miserable piece of shit, if you hate yourself, you hate everybody and everything. And that's a big, that's, that's one of my red flags for my mental health. If I fucking hate you, if I, if I fucking hate you, yep. I'm like, wait, what am I really upset with? And so I'll, I'll sit here and fucking hate you, but it's because I'm, because there's a, um, cognitive dissonance, right? There's, there's, there's my goals and how I'm behaving. And when those don't fucking line up, yep. you fucking hate. And first we sp spread hatred outwards and it takes a, it takes a lot of self-awareness to realize, wait a minute, I don't hate Owen. Wait a I second. hate me. Why? And why do I hate me? Because I'm living I'm not living in accordance with my goals. I'm not moving in the same direction as my goals. So like our, if our motivation is this, our behavior has to be this too. Like we have to, or oh, like, yeah. so it's like a triangle. It's like yep. if motivation is here, our behavior has to go here. Yep. And cause like if our motivation is who we want to be and if, and if, and if, and if, so if this is our motivation and we're going like this and we're never going to connect, yeah. we get fucking angry. We right. get fucking angry. And like, you know, I, I, it's not when I, when I see, when I get mad at social media and like politics and people who are saying stuff and yeah. when I get mad at things like that, I'm like, Oh, okay, Derek, you need to like, you're not doing what you need to do and it's making you very unhappy. And so when I say like, be selfish, turn the world off and, and, and go to the fucking gym, especially on that day you don't want to, you're it's, it's selfish in that we're telling everybody to go fuck themselves. But when we come back, we're going to be better people. We're going to be better friends, um, husbands, wives, girlfriends, boyfriends, um, father, mother. We're going to be better people. So yep. it's, it's selfish, but it's not, you know, so selfish with good intent. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. So it's like, you know, so like dis distractions will fucking ruin your discipline. You have to, you have to remove distractions. If Airplane you're, mode. if you're fucking lacking on discipline, first off, first and foremost, a lot of times grab your fucking nuts or your proverbial lady nuts. Okay. Cause like, yes, <laughs> life is hard motherfucker. That's my life motto, dude. Like existence is difficult and breathing is expensive. Okay. If you can come to terms with that, if you just know that life is difficult, you're like, oh yeah, it's supposed to be difficult because like the, you know, the alternative is death and death is easy because yep. I do nothing. So, you know, but as long as you're here, you always have too much to do. Okay, but we overcomplicate life. It can be such, it can be as simple as just fucking focusing on your bench press for 30 minutes. Mm, that's a beautiful fucking way to spend time, in my opinion, you know? <laughs> so if you're, if you're lacking on discipline, remove distractions. Not all the time, but like for an hour a day, you know? And if you, if you, if you have no desire, uh, that's the, you know, there's like, there's, there's times where I feel like I have no desire and I have to circle back around to what makes me me? Who am I? When I try to be something I'm not, it eats away at me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I lost my way. I do that when I fuck with music a lot. Cause, oh, cause yeah. so like, this is, this is, this is a very true version of me. Like this physical fitness, you know, with these like ambitious goals and always pushing it and, and pretty mentally tough. You know, this is, this is a big part of what makes me me. But there's another part of me that's a huge fucking pussy and is just sad and likes to talk about, I'm 30 fucking, I'm, am I 34? I think I'm 34 years old. I still just want to write music about like teenage breakups. Okay. You know, but so like, it's like, I can lose myself a little bit and lose my desire to be physically and mentally tough. And it's like, why, why do I feel this way? I have to circle back around and rem remind myself, oh, right. I want to be a bad motherfucker. All right. I don't want to be a fucking pussy. I want to be a bad motherfucker. So if you lack desire, just look at yourself in the mirror and you got to, in most of the times you'd be like, shit, I'm being a pussy. And what do I want to be a bad motherfucker? And what does a bad motherfucker do where they like work towards their fucking goals and mm -hmm. they attack their life. They don't just sit around and fucking mope. So desire is just a fucking mental switch. You turn your fucking, you know, you turn it on or off. So like discipline, desire, you know, commitment is a big, like just commit. Like if you, if you have a goal, a motivation, it, like just commit. So it's like right now in this powerlifting prep, 
I'm struggling or I, I'm fine that I am not pulling out of this prep. I'm going to give it 110%. But my goal in this powerlifting prep was really just to get strength back. And, right. And I'm already stronger than I fucking need to be. And so I'm going through all this pain to do something that I don't need to do. I really don't, you know, but I fucking set this goal and I'm going to commit. You're I fucking commit. It. And then, on, and, and like on April 5th, I'm going to be like, all right, I'm not doing that again. Done. That was, that was fun. Like people fucking, people fucking fail at that so hard. They bounce around from goal to goal. Like pick up, like, we'll talk about this in goals, but like if your motivation is to be this person, okay, when do I want to be this person by? All right. And what do I need to do? Fucking do that. And then once you accomplish that goal, come back and be like, all right, I, I don't want to live like that. You, but, you cheat yourself of a, of a very important tool to be used later on when you're struggling with whatever else the next fucking challenge is. When you can't go back to that easy goal or, or, or yeah. not easy, but th that, that accomplishment that you, that you stuck with and you fucking powered through it. You cheat yourself of the, of the tool of being able to say, well, fuck, man, I did that. And that yeah. wasn't hard. That was um. It ended up being easy. These jets are really flying today. Damn Air Force man. Yeah, like you guys know, I've said this before. We live by an Air Force base. Is the microphone picking them up at all, or? I can hear it in my headphones. Oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. We live right by an Air Force base. Fucking jets. So, dude, I've said this. I've said this since 2015. I used to say it a lot more. It was something I learned. It's like, cause, cause like my whole life, it was nothing but self doubt. I fucking just like a sad, depressed piece of shit. I turned a corner last year when I had the kids because mm -hmm. I had to look myself in the mirror. It's like, shit, I don't want my boys to be like me. Maybe they will be. But is there something I can do to maybe make them not fucking hate themselves as much as I've hated myself my entire life? And I was like, okay, okay it starts with me. And I just, you know, it was yep. like, oh, sh and I was like, wait, if I had this positive mentality in my head all this whole time, why the fuck did I have to live like that? It's a fucking, you know, I, I, we, we need to find a new word. Cause like everybody is using the word journey and it fucking yeah, annoys the word. fuck out of me. Cause and they use I'm it with my, like, yeah, follow, follow my fucking fitness journey. It's like, shut the fuck up. You're, you're just, you're just, you're just living your life. Like the rest of us, bitch. It's not a, but there's gotta be a fucking <laughs> other word for it. Like we're all on a fucking journey. Okay. We're fucking marching towards our death. That's I'm on my death journey. Follow me at Derek Whita on my death journey. <laughs> See what I do on the road there. You know, like if that's not the truest thing, um, but I used to say, you know, get it, like, you know, like, yes, commit to your goal, accomplish it and then decide. But it's like, let your fucking momentum be the thing that carries you forward. You know, if you have nothing to look back and say, like, I accomplished, like, I, I didn't, you have to be able to look back and say, I didn't want to do this then, but I right. did it and I accomplished it. And, and I, so, and then I moved on yeah. to something that I wanted to do. And that's something I, that's something that I learned after like. You know, it was like kind of like, you know, like doing a couple Tough Mudders and competitions. I didn't think I could do these things. And then at the end of the day, like, or, you know, and then when I was facing like self-doubt in 2016, it's just like, oh, right. I never believe in myself, but I accomplish shit anyways. So this negative voice, yeah. I can just ignore it. And, but you need like, you need to know you have to have evidence. So like, that's the thing, like that negative self voice, but I had evidence against the voice that says I can't, yeah. I had ev evidence arguing against that voice. Right. So yeah, it's so like, shut commit, the fuck up. commit, accomplish something. Accomplishing sh shit feels great. Yeah. You know? So it's like, but like, these are all things people know. Don't, if you don't ever, so I like, we're going to start wrapping this up. Like, don't ever write me and say you don't have motivation. Cause I'll, cause like now I'm just going to respond to people. I say like, are you a potato? <laughs> do you not have fucking thoughts? If, if you have thoughts, you have motivation, you know, like, you know, like, because like, that's what motivation is. Nothing more than an idea of who we want to be and what we want to do. I think understanding that is cool. Cause then we fucking, we unpack it and be like, okay, what am I really missing? And like, these are the things where you fucking have to like answer and you answer to yourself. Am I disciplined? No. Yeah, All right. That's not, not a good so thing. Right yeah. Now. Do I, is like, is my desire there? Is my work ethic there? Is, is, am I committing, you know? And so it's like, like, man, if you can't see this video, I, I think I'm drawing like a triangle. It's like, if this is who we want to be and it's a point up there, the pyramid, one, the pyramid, one side is our motivation. That's who we want to be. The other side is our behavior. We have to live in accordance with that. Otherwise we're going to be very fucked up on happy people. And you live that way for too long. And the next thing you know, three years have gone by and you're a fat motherfucker and you're writing some fucking piece of shit with face tattoos on the internet asking for life advice. <laughs> what?
what? <laughs> like, like maybe How that's the thing. Like, here? yeah, shit. Maybe I should like, you know, put more effort into answering these questions because if they're at the point in their life where they're writing me for help, that's got to be like the definition of rock bottom. <laughs> like, you know, like I don't know where else to turn. Hey, this fucking this guy looks good. Yeah, yeah, shit. <laughs> you know, or like the person I want to ask is will never write me back. I'll just I'll just settle for this bottom dweller here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but I think I think that's the like the beautiful thing is like people like oh man if it, like instead of writing me if people just like looked at themselves in the mirror it's like and like the, the the golden question is am I being am I am I being a bad motherfucker or am I being a fucking sad little bitch am I being a fucking pussy I say that to myself yep. that is my self talk when I like and that shit and like it 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 hypes me up like uh, like a lot of times before my second workout I'm in the shower just like oh 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 and then I get out and I look in the mirror and I'm like. And I say it. I literally like say the words out loud. It's like, you're being a fucking bitch. You're being a fucking bitch. And that's not what you want to be. That's not what you want to do. So don't like shut the fuck up. Go out there and do what you need. It. You need to fucking do like Kill it. that's it. Yeah. Yep. And then you just like talk yourself. Everything is a fucking. So th that that inner monologue is not it is it is universal yep. it is motherfucking universal champions like you know and that's actually man so one of the things from you know stacy and i were talking about the other day is that negative voice actually fucking it's a positive thing because it makes you want to be better mm -hmm. if you didn't have a negative voice you would just be happy and content you know and fucking people who are happy and content are stupid I'm trying like, to picture like like walking around through life with an inner with an inner voice that's just constantly yeah. hyping myself up. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, you fucking crushed shutting the door just then. Yeah, like, right. Fuck. Man. Or just like you're amazing. That's you know it's it's good to be like like the the key is to be happy where you are. Um, but like that that inner negative voice is it's what gets you to where you want to be. Yeah, so, uh, Stacy. Listen to a whole podcast about it on the happiness lab. Like negative self-talk is actually a positive thing. I was like, that makes a lot of sense. Because if we're not shitting on ourselves, how are we going to get better? You know? So I think, you know, like when you have like, so like understanding motivation, like what we're really talking about when, when people say they don't have motivation is they don't feel good. You need to fucking rise up to that inner voice. That inner voice is telling you, no, you can't. And you have to look yourself in the mirror and say out loud, yes, I fucking can. Yes, I can. I'm going to try. Watch this shit, bitch. Like you talk, I talk to myself. I'll show you. You know, like, yeah. Cause, and, and, and so, and don't beat your, so don't beat yourself up because you have that negative voice. It's the thing that's telling you to be better. Yep. You know, and like, so don't beat yourself up about it. Just listen to it and be like, oh, yeah, okay, well, like, watch this shit, you little fucking bitch. Like, you're a fucking <laughs> pussy. I say that to myself all the time. But it's like, there's different me's, you know? It's like, yeah. you're a fucking pussy. You know? Like, you know, it's like, when I approach a barbell, if I think I can't do it, it's like, let's go, you fucking bitch. You know? I say that to myself. I know. It I is, catch yeah. it on the mic sometimes. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. funny. Yeah, quit being a fucking bitch. Let's so I'm not, you know, so it's like, it's not my MO when somebody writes me and they're asking for help. And I just, I'm just you know, I just want to be like, are you like, you're being a fucking bitch. I, it's not my MO to say that, but I've started doing it more. I'm like, if, if I'm not being honest with people when I'm helping them, like, this is how I talk to myself. I'm they, giving they, you what I give yeah, myself. They share their problem with me. It's like, oh, right. I experienced this. This is how I go about it. Be like, are you a fucking bitch? Are you a fucking bitch, dude? Like, why do you want to be a bitch? You sit like you were, you were in the army for four years and you like, you were a bad motherfucker and you want to be a bad motherfucker, but now you're just a fucking sloppy ass pussy. Do you want to be a sloppy ass pussy? No. So get out there and be a bad motherfucker. All right. So yeah, that's, I'm going to, I'm going to start talking to people like that more, but it's out of love and, uh, and it's the only thing that can help. And I'll tell you, this is a sub story. When I, um, when I really turned a corner, like, dude, I was, I was, I was doing poorly for a long time after, you know, uh, getting retired mm -hmm. and it was, it was 2013 and I that's was hard to I, do. Yeah, I was dude, I, but you know, so I was like drinking and threatening to kill yep. myself, freaking out, putting a gun to my head and shit like that. And it was, 
I was just out of control and it was, it was happening less and less. So where it was like, it was like once a week, then it was like once a month and then it was like twice a year, but there was this time in Denver. And so this is my, I, I moved to Denver to be closer to my friend, Sean Ensley, you know, and I was fucking freaking out in my apartment one night and I was fucking drunk and I had the gun and everything. And my mom called Sean and he came, he came over to my apartment and I was fucking blacked out as shit. But I remember he said something along the lines of, he said, Derek, if you're going to do it, do it. Quit doing this to other people. Quit doing this to your mom. Quit doing this to your wife. Quit fucking scaring the shit, you motherfucker. You're like, if you're going to do it, do it. Nobody wants you to do it. But if you're going to do it, do it. If you're not going to do it, quit or quit being like this to your mom. And I was like, you're right. You're right. Like, I'd, I'd never wanted to die. Right. I just was just like struggling so hard to find a reason to live. And that's what, that's why I never pulled the trigger. I think cause there mm -hmm. was all, I never wanted to die. I wanted a better life. I wanted a different life, but you have to fucking live the life you have. Okay. So that was, but it's so like that. And that is dangerous ass advice. Okay. Yeah. But that's being honest. And that's right. what helped me. Yep. No, none of the fucking kumbaya shit ever helped me. And so now when I'm giving people advice, I just like, I need to be, actually real with people like I have a reputation for being like no filter real with people right but I've been very coddly over the years well, there's but like it doesn't help in a lot of cases you know yeah. and like the real shit is is like you know if I was like oh it's okay to not believe in yourself that's all right let's just take it one day at a time you know it's like it's like oh yeah that was warm and cutting it was like hey are you a fucking bitch or are you a fucking, do you want to be a fucking winner, dude? Do you want to be a fucking loser? Do you want to feel like a fucking loser? Or do you want to feel like a winner? Because that's all it is. We're just talking about winners and losers here. Go be a fucking winner. Because there's a winner inside of you and there's a loser inside. Which one, you know, like all these, all these old adages, adages and cliches, mm -hmm. like, you know, the, you, it's like the wolf you feed type argument. Like there's two fucking wolves in your brain and the one you feed is the one that's going to grow and take over. Like right. they're just so true. Yeah. They're just so fucking true. Yep. I could still be a fucking miserable, depressed piece of shit right very, now, very easily. right now if yeah. I wanted to, you know, but I feed the other voice. So it's like, Hey guys, if you're not motivated, <laughs> nobody is, nobody is, nobody is. That's fucking, it's just like, we're human. We are fucking stupid and lazy. We really are, you know? <laughs> But like you, you have a voice inside your head that also wants to be better. That's actually, you are motivated. That's your motivation. The voice inside the, of you that wants to be better, that's your motivation. Do the necessary shit to follow that path. Have discipline, you know, remember your desire and fucking commit. That's it. That's my fucking point of today. You have motivation. Don't be a fucking bitch about accomplishing your goals and becoming the person you want to be. We can do it. I'm trying really hard and I'm mildly successful. But anyways, that's it for episode four here on Savage Saturdays, everybody. As always, I love you. Uh, Owen, say goodbye for us. See you later. Have a good one, guys.